Look, it's half past nine. There's been serious rioting tonight in central London. More than a hundred people have been injured after a mass demonstration against the poll tax ended in violence. Trafalgar Square has been turned into a battleground. Cars have been destroyed. Shops have been looted. And more than 300 arrested in London's night of riots. Good evening. More than 100 people have been injured tonight in serious rioting across central London. What began as a peaceful mass demonstration against the poll tax by more than 50,000 people ended in violence. Cars have been overturned and burnt, shops looted, and more than 300 people have been arrested. The trouble is still going on. The police say 50 of their officers are in hospital and 20 of their horses have been hurt. Tonight, they accused a minority of around 3,000 of the demonstrators of launching a ferocious and sustained attack on them. It was one of the biggest marches seen in London in recent years. Starting peacefully enough, it snaked through South London, across the river and past Parliament, to end in a rally at Trafalgar Square, addressed by speakers including Tony Benn. The head of the march was still pouring into the square as the first trouble began outside Downing Street, where part of the crowd had stopped. Mounted police tried to control the crowd, but were pelted with missiles from a nearby building site. One policeman was knocked unconscious. Then, police at the head of Whitehall ran back towards Downing Street, pursued by angry demonstrators. But the worst trouble came in Trafalgar Square itself. Mounted police made several charges around the square. In one, a young woman was knocked down and run over by horses. Others from the crowd went in to carry her away. She was shaken, but still conscious. Then the looting began. Shop windows were broken and bottles grabbed. Stewards from the march pleaded with them to stop. Nearby, demonstrators had climbed onto scaffolding, egging on the crowd below. Later, the same building was engulfed by fire. Thick black smoke billowed across the square and over Nelson's column. At this stage, the square had been turned into a virtual battleground. Dozens of police and demonstrators were hurt by missiles including bottles, stones and scaffolding poles. And as the evening went on, the number of arrests mounted. Later, part of the crowd ran down Charing Cross Road and into London's theatre land. Cars were overturned and set alight. As darkness fell, the trouble continued. Police trying to disperse crowds from Trafalgar Square. Many headed for the West End, smashing the windows of shops and restaurants on the way. For a time, Charing Cross Station was sealed off tonight by the police. It was an ugly finale to what the march organisers had hoped would be a massive but peaceful protest against the poll tax. The injured have been taken to hospitals throughout London. Most have head wounds from pieces of concrete or brick. At least two people are being described as seriously injured. By late afternoon, hospitals in central London were dealing with a steady stream of casualties, the great majority of them people suffering from minor head injuries. Some of those treated said they had nothing to do with the demonstration, but couldn't avoid being caught up in the violence. We came out of Leicester Square tube station, and um, there was a bit of mess. We didn't know anything about the Poltex demonstration at all. Um, and we came out, and then there was this charge with the police horses. And um, I just unfortunately got left in the middle of it. At Westminster Hospital, most of the injured were quickly discharged, but extra staff had been needed to deal with the numbers requiring attention. Well, as usual, nurses have called us before we've had to call them. We've got a very well organised major accident policy which has gone into operation without any problems. 
More than 50 people were taken to St Thomas's Hospital, among them all the injured police. I was trying to organise my officers and I bent down over uh, one of the chaps who was apparently injured. At that stage I got struck twice on the top of the head. I was in a stooping position and I believe I then got kicked in the face and received the injury that you can see to my eye. With casualties continuing to arrive into the evening, hospitals are still updating their figures for the numbers hurt, but at the moment only a handful of people are being detained overnight. Within the last hour, the police have been giving their reaction to the day's events. They're blaming a minority of around 3,000 political activists, some of whom were carrying black flags. The police have accused them of launching a ferocious, sustained attack on their officers. What we're talking about now are 3,000 plus fairly hard core violent people. They started pelting the officers with scaffold clips, scaffold poles, uh, they discharged fire extinguishers, and, and when we were eventually clearing them out of there, they actually set fire to the port cabin. You talk about the minority groups. Can you identify them more positively than that? Not really. Um, we were obviously conscious that there were black flags around, which normally indicate um, anarchists. Um, th there were other well-known minority groups present today as well. MPs from all sides of Parliament have condemned the violence. The Prime Minister said it was deplorable. The Home Secretary, David Waddington, said it was disgraceful that the police should have to deal with hooliganism of this kind. And Labour's deputy leader, Roy Hattersley, said the violence was the work of mindless hooligans. There were poll tax demonstrators even in Cheltenham today on the eve of the imposition of the tax in England and Wales. At a conference for leading Conservatives there, the Prime Minister spent much of her speech defending the community charge. And speaking before the events in Trafalgar Square, she condemned the violence of earlier demonstrations. In recent weeks, Marxist agitators and militants have organised mob violence. Policemen have been punched, councillors assaulted, and shopkeepers have seen their shops looted. There have been demonstrations at town halls across the country as the poll tax has been set in recent months. They've been organised and sometimes violent. Before today's demonstration, anti-poll tax protesters blotted out the noon bulletin on a London news station, transmitting their own message. We would urge everyone to join with the mass campaign of non-payment and finish off the poll tax once and for all. The Labour leader, Neil Kinnock, today in South Wales, has in the past distanced himself from violent and illegal actions over the poll tax, describing those involved as toy town revolutionaries. And a Labour MP at the rally said the violence today was the work of anarchists who attacked the police. The demonstration's organisers have been quick to condemn the activities. Of course we don't condone that. We condemn it totally like most working class people would do. People sitting watching those scenes would be very, very angry at this small minority of people. So have what went wrong? What has been a marvellous demonstration. So what went wrong? What went wrong, basically, was we had two or 250 of these individuals who were intent on causing trouble. In Glasgow, there was a huge and peaceful rally to mark the first anniversary of the introduction of the poll tax to Scotland. The organisers claimed it was the largest grassroots demonstration against government policy since the 1920s. And the Liberal Democrat leader was speaking to a conference in Gala Shields. Well, in Scotland, you've had the poll tax for a year or so, and I can't see any signs of its popularity here. If the Tory re Tories really wanted to get rid of the unpopular poll tax, they would first have to get rid of the unpopular Prime Minister. Tonight, London's West End shows the scars the day before the poll tax is in place. The Prime Minister has said there is no vacancy at 10 Downing Street. She said again she has no intention of retiring at a Conservative conference at Cheltenham.